Many scientists look at the SETI program and they say, see, we've scanned the heavens and we see no evidence of any intelligent life in outer space. Well, I don't think so. I don't think that perhaps in the next century we'll find any usable signal from outer space. First of all, we've only scanned perhaps 100 light years from the planet Earth in some detail. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years across, and galaxies are tens of millions of light years distant. So we've only scanned a small neighborhood of our galaxy. Second of all, we've only looked at frequencies near the frequency of hydrogen. That's silly. This goes back to the person who, who lost his key. A person who drops his key will often look next to a lamppost. But if you say to the man, why are you looking next to a lamppost? You dropped your key over there. The person will say, well, that's where the light is. There's no light over there. Therefore, I will look over here. We look at hydrogen frequencies because they're convenient. However, we don't think, scientists don't think that these aliens will communicate at hydrogen frequencies. Perhaps they use laser technology. We've only barely begun to scan other frequencies. Therefore, we have to look at the broadband. Also, when you communicate across vast distances, we sometimes take a signal and chop it up. And then we send each piece and it reforms at the other end. That's how the internet works. Email is chopped up, sent through various cities, and is reformed at the other end. But if you were to intercept one fragment of email, you'd get nonsense, gibberish, until it's reformed. Therefore, in outer space, they probably send signals not on one frequency, but perhaps on the entire spectrum, so that a passing star will not interrupt the entire signal. Then at the other end, they reassemble the signal. If you were to listen in on the signal, you would hear gibberish nonsense. In other words, we could be in the middle of an intergalactic conversation and we wouldn't even know. Our technology is so primitive, we look on simply one frequency. Any advanced civilization will send messages across all frequencies in order to compensate for passing stars, passing stellar explosion and static and interference. That's real science. However, Scientists sometimes judge alien technology on the basis of what we can do, not on the basis of what a type 3 civilization, millions of years more advanced than ours, can do. There is the famous Fermi paradox. That is, if there are extraterrestrial beings out there, then where are they? Well, take a look at this. Let's say we have an anthill in the middle of a forest. And right next to the anthill, uh, they're building a 10-lane superhighway. And the question is, would the ants be able to communicate or understand what a 10-lane superhighway is? Would the ants be able to understand the technology, the intentions of beings building a 10-lane superhighway right next to the ants? Let's say, however, you go down to the ants and you say to the ants, I bring you trinkets, I bring you beads. I bring you knowledge. I bring you nuclear energy. I bring you DNA technology. I bring you utopia. Take me to your leader. Is that what you say when you bump into ants? No. Most people simply step on a few of them. Now, if we are really a type zero civilization and beings of a type three civilization can soar across hyperspace, they are perhaps millions of years more advanced than us. The distance between us and ants would be the same comparable distance between type 3 and a type 0 civilization. In other words, we are so arrogant, we're so conceited that we say they must visit us.